Hello, welcome to Today in History. My name is Sotonie Afyasimama. Let's get started by rolling back the blind to the year 1896. And if you're here for the first time, consider liking this video and also subscribing. Do that by clicking the notification bell, but only if you like the video, of course. Let's get started. 1896, on this day, the National Association or Association for Colored Women was founded. Now, I'm just going to digress a bit about the pronunciation of this word. So is it association or association? Let's find out from Google. You know, this takes me way back to my secondary school days. And um, I remember attending a women's organization meeting or something. I was in a school band at the time, so we had to play for these women. And I remember distinctly hearing this old woman pronouncing this word, association. And I giggled. It wasn't just me. Some of my classmates as well giggled because we're not used to hearing this word pronounced that way. And interestingly, my English teacher was nearby within earshot and heard her giggling. And she turned around and said, that woman is actually correct. She pronounced the word correctly. So she pronounced it association. Now, apparently from Google, I'm going to click this now and you'll hear that they pronounce the pronoun. Association. Association. Okay. Association. Right. So she clearly say, says association. But now, well, I'm not an expert in phonetics. But if you f look at these very closely, so these are the two different pronunciations of the word association. Now, now what I noticed was this is the R sound, so A-S-O-C-Y-A. Is that C or she? Now compare that with that. So we have the U before the S and the I, and here we have the U before that sound there, which I think is a SH sound, okay? So my conclusion is both pronunciations are correct. So this will be association, this first one, and the second one would be the one with the audio, association, which I think is more commonly used today. Okay, so both are correct, so I may use both inter interchangeably. Let's move on back, let's get back on track. A bit of um, phonetics for you there. So, this association was founded by Mary Church Terrell on this day in Washington, D.C. The year again was 1896, and it's called the National Association for Colored Women. Let's move on to the year 1899, so just three years later, Ernest Hemingway was born. Pardon that. Ernest Hemingway, born on this day in 1899, is a U.S. novelist and Nobel Prize winner. He's the author of more than 15 books, which I counted on Google, um, including For Whom the Bell Tolls, The Sun Also Rises, Islands in the Stream, The Garden of Eden, and many others. Um, one of which I remember correctly from, I remember vividly from my secondary school days, was The Old Man and the Sea, um, yeah, which, which we read as one of our literature books. It was one of the requirements we had for literature in my secondary school days. So, yeah, so that's in the same way. And um, I really like that picture, so I thought I'd include that as quite interesting. Artistic as well, you know, his name written across um, seven of the nine volumes pictured there. So, you know, one can go out and get the set, the set of books. So yeah, Ernest Hemingway, born on this day in 1899. Uh, we go on to this 
lady who is also an author. So two authors born 45 years apart. Her name is Florence Onyebuchi, short, Buchi for short, Emecheta. She's Nigerian of the Igbo tribe, and she's an OB as well. So an OB simply means Order of the British Empire. So essentially she was honored by the Queen of England. And for those who know a bit of history, Nigeria was a former British colony. So most people in Nigeria speak English. Um, she also spent most of her years in the United Kingdom. Um, apparently from 1962, she has lived in the United Kingdom until uh, three years ago when she passed on, sadly. So these are some of her books. Um, so The Joys of Motherhood, Second Class Citizen, The Bride Prize, The New Tribe, and also not pictured here is The Slave Girl. She is an author of more than 20 books and most of her early novels were published by a London-based company, Alison and Bosby, and her editor's name was Margaret Bosby. So that is Buchi Emecheta, who was born on this day, another author, this time of Nigerian extraction. Um, yeah, let's move on to the next, 19... 54, 10 years later, we are in the country, countries formerly known as North and South Vietnam, They're both reunified now. That happened on the 30th of April 1975. But at one point in uh, 1954, when the French Empire began to crumble in Asia, um, specifically Southeast Asia, um, the Republic of Vietnam and the State of Vietnam were created on that day. The Republic, I think, was North Vietnam and the State was uh, South Vietnam, State of Vietnam. So commonly known as North Vietnam and South Vietnam as pictured here. But they're now both one country. Next item was in the year 1957, so three years later, and we come across Althea Gibson again. I did um, feature her in one of my videos, or a few videos ago. I will try my best to put a link on this one. Um, hopefully I don't forget. I'll take note of that, and if I have the time, I'll put a link so that you can watch that video as well. Well, this lady, Althea Gibson, she becomes the first African-American woman to win a major tennis championship in the United States. She was born in Clarendon County, South Carolina, on the 25th of August in 1927, and sadly died on the 28th of September 2003 in East Orange, New Jersey, at the age of 76. So, 1957 on this day, she becomes the first African-American woman to win a major tennis championship. Her name again is Althea Gibson. The year 1970, so 23 years later, and we are in Egypt. The Aswan High Dam completed after 11 years of construction. It's constructed across the Nile, and obviously it was um, to end the cycle of flood and drought in the Nile River region. Um, although it did cause some problems, some environmental problems, you know, controversial environmental impact, it says here. Um, but, well, you know, with every step that one takes in life, uh, every step that a government takes, there are pluses and minuses. As long as the pluses outweigh the minuses, then I, I guess it's worth it, you know. Um, so, yeah, so that's the dam. That's one high dam, which um, was constructed or was opened on this day in 19... 70 after 11 years of construction it's a tremendous source of renewable energy and um, obviously provided irrigation as well uh, without it it had its pluses and minuses but the pluses in this case in my opinion outweigh the minuses okay so 2005 last but not least on this day Second attempt at the London Underground by terrorists. 
um, yeah, but thankfully that didn't succeed. So this is one of the underground stations uh, in London, Warren Street underground. Um, so these terrorists who had previously killed uh, 52 people two weeks before attempted another terrorist attack in London, but this did not succeed, thankfully. None of the bombs, the three bombs that were, set, uh, that were um, placed or set up exploded, which I think was, was a miracle. It had to be because, I mean, three bombs, none of them exploded. You know, that was really lucky. It was lucky for Londoners. So on that note, um, I end this video today in history. Um, we should all be vigilant, you know, it just reminds me that the, the threat of terrorism is still um, very much around. We should all be watchful um, and um, go about our businesses in an orderly fashion. And if we see anything that's um, suspicious, obviously report it to the police, the law enforcement agents who can sort things out. Let's not be complacent. Um, the threat of terrorism is still real in our world, unfortunately. On that note, um, I'll end it for today's Today in History. Take care, guys. And like I mentioned earlier, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. It helps with the algorithm. And also consider subscribing so that you receive updates of my video uploads. Thanks again. Stay safe, guys. Have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.